The Sony ZV-E1 just received the free firmware update slash camera upgrade today that unlocks 4K 120 frames per second and 1080p 240 frames per second. I'm gonna show you how to install the upgrade, how to access the new settings, some sample footage, as well as some overheating tests. First, to get started, you'll want to go to the link in the description to get to the Sony website where you'll enter your camera's seven digit serial number. You can find the serial number on the bottom of your camera or in your camera settings, all the way in the bottom menu and then under serial number. Then the website will generate a license file for upgrading your camera specific to your serial number. You just download the license file and drag it onto an SD card in the top folder. Then you just plug that SD card into the ZV-E1 and when you boot up the camera, it will ask you if you want to load the license file. You just hit OK and then you're good to go. You can confirm it worked by going into the menu, then go to Setup, Setup Option, then Manage Licenses. It should show 4K 120p recording as an unlocked upgrade. If you run into an error when trying to load the license, double check that you entered the serial number correctly on the Sony website prior to downloading the license file. With the camera upgrade unlocked, your ZV-E1 will now be able to shoot 4K 120 frames per second at 280 megabits per second for 2210 bit for a sweet four to five times slow motion, depending on if you're editing in 24 or 30 frames per second. To access 4K 120, you'll need to set your video codec to either XAVC S 4K or XAVC HS 4K, the latter being a more storage efficient codec and the former being a higher bit rate and higher quality image that takes up more space. In either codec, once you've set it, you should now see the option for recording in 120 frames per second. And yes, it's the same bit rate and just as glorious as the 4K 120 you get out of your A7S III. You're getting enough color data that you're able to shoot in S-Log3 and really play with the colors to achieve some beautiful looking slow motion shots. If you're looking to shoot in 1080p 240 frames per second, similar to the A7S III, you'll need to access this frame rate through the S and Q or slow and quick mode of your camera. If you're unfamiliar, this basically hard bakes in the slow motion into your footage and does not record audio when you're rolling. If you go into the menu, go to shooting, SNQ settings, and then you'll want to get your recording frame rate to either 24 or 30 frames per second, and then set the actual frame rate that you're shooting at to 240 frames per second. This will give you eight to 10 times slow motion at 50 megabits per second for 2210 bit output, which again, looks incredible. You won't always need eight to 10 times slow motion, but when you want to pull it out of your toolkit to get some incredible slow motion, you've got it right there at your disposal. Throw your color grade on that and bam, you've got a dramatic looking shot. Now let's talk about overheating. Everyone's biggest concern with the ZV-E1 has been overheating and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but yes, overheating is worse in these higher frame rate modes. I did a few tests and I was only able to get 4K 120 indoors at 77 degrees Fahrenheit for around 13 minutes and 1080p 240 for around 17 minutes. It got worse when I took it outside at 90 degrees Fahrenheit at 4K 120, I shot about five minutes before it overheated and at 1080p 240, I got about seven minutes before it overheated. But let's be honest, I don't think we were thinking that it was gonna somehow do incredibly well with even higher frame rates than before. To the naysayers, if the ZV-E1 wasn't for you before, it probably still isn't for you now. But for those of you who have been loving the ZV-E1 and it's been serving you well, you're already familiar with using this camera in bursts and this is no different. Plus, I, I don't think anybody needs like five plus or 10 plus minutes straight of 4K 120 or 1080p 240. Personally, I'm super pumped that my favorite content creator camera, which is also one of the smallest full frame cameras out there on the market, now has even more options for me to shoot with. All right, this was a short one. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.